Part 1. Lisa McPherson and the Troubled Depths of Scientology Lisa McPherson, a vibrant and ambitious auditor for the Church of Scientology, found herself at the epicenter of a tragedy that would cast a long, dark shadow on the controversial organization. In December 1995, Lisa's life abruptly ended within the confines of Scientology's flag service organization, FSO, in Clearwater, Florida. Her death, shrouded in secrecy and plagued by conflicting narratives, ignited a firestorm of public scrutiny and legal battles, raising critical questions about faith, mental health, and the boundaries of power within Scientology. Lisa's journey into Scientology began promisingly. Born in Kansas in 1959, she possessed a magnetic personality and a passion for self-improvement. Drawn to the Church's promises of spiritual enlightenment and personal empowerment, Lisa embraced her newfound faith, diligently climbing the ranks of Scientology's auditing system. As a highly skilled auditor, her role involved guiding others through intensive interrogations aimed at uncovering and resolving past traumas. Yet, beneath the surface of her dedication, cracks began to appear. The pressures of Scientology's demanding regimen, coupled with potential personal struggles, took their toll. Reports emerged of Lisa exhibiting overt behavior, a term used within the church to denote disobedience or negativity. In November 1995, following a car accident and a subsequent mental breakdown, Lisa was placed in the FSO, a Scientology-owned facility where members deemed to be in spiritual distress were subjected to isolation and intensive auditing. Within the sterile confines of the FSO, Lisa's world shrunk to the four walls of a bare room and the relentless pressure of Scientology practices. The Introspection Rundown, a controversial auditing program designed to address so-called overt behavior, involved long hours of isolation, forced confessions, and sleep deprivation. Accounts from former church members paint a disturbing picture of Lisa's decline deteriorating physical health, erratic behavior, and desperate pleas for help that went unanswered. As days turned into weeks, Lisa's condition worsened dramatically. Scientology officials, seemingly more concerned with maintaining control than seeking professional medical assistance, continued to administer auditing sessions and force-feed her protein shakes. By December 5, the situation reached a tragic tipping point. In a state of severe dehydration and malnutrition, Lisa was rushed to a hospital, not the nearest one, but one staffed by a Scientologist doctor. It was too late. Lisa McPherson, a woman once brimming with life and promise, was pronounced dead. The news of Lisa's death sent shockwaves through the public and ignited a media frenzy. Discrepancies between Scientology's sanitized explanation and emerging eyewitness accounts fueled suspicion. An autopsy revealed a shocking truth Lisa's body, emaciated and bruised, bore the telltale signs of neglect. The cause of death a pulmonary embolism, likely triggered by severe dehydration. Lisa McPherson's story became a potent symbol of the potential dangers lurking beneath the polished surface of Scientology. Her tragic demise sparked a series of legal battles, with lawsuits accusing the Church of Negligence, practicing medicine without a license, and wrongful death. While some charges were dismissed, others resulted in settlements, a testament to the weight of evidence against the organization. In the aftermath of Lisa's death, Scientology found itself facing increased scrutiny and public backlash. Critics condemned the Church's handling of mental health issues and its alleged culture of control and secrecy. Lisa's story resonated with those who questioned the organization's practices and challenged its claims of spiritual betterment. Lisa McPherson's descent into tragedy serves as a chilling reminder of the blurred lines between faith and manipulation, the vulnerability of individuals within hierarchical structures, and the enduring importance of holding powerful organizations accountable. As the echoes of her case continue to reverberate, it compels us to confront uncomfortable truths and urge greater vigilance in safeguarding individual well-being within the confines of any belief system. This is part one of a two-part series. Join us in part two. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.